I've entitled this lecture, Engineering Graphics from Ancient to Modern. The question this lecture attempts to answer is when did mankind start planning and creating drawings and models of things they were about to build? We have all personally seen or viewed pictures of Egyptian, Mayan, and Fremont Indian hieroglyphics and petroglyphs. The Egyptian hieroglyphics date back to 4000 BC. It wasn't until 1799 when Napoleon's troops invaded Egypt and discovered the Rosetta Stone that we have been able to understand the Egyptian writings. The stone showed Egyptian hieroglyphics, Egyptian demonic script, and a Greek translation. In a similar way, Mayan and pre-Mayan cultures were prolific in their creation of hieroglyphics as their form of communication. In the state of Utah, where I live, and the adjoining states of Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico, the Fremont Indians created hundreds, if not thousands, of petroglyphs to describe and record important events. What I find amazing is given all of these graphics and drawings, little, if any, record the great engineering feats of their culture. Can we find the drawings and plans of how the great pyramids of Egypt were architected and created? Can we find the drawings and plans of how the Mayans created their observatories? Or can we find drawings and plans of how the Anasazis built a half million gallon reservoir for their cliff dwelling community? Or further to the south, can we find the drawings and plans for a five story Pueblo apartment house which had 800 rooms? Today, civil engineers are still amazed at the accuracy, dimension, and scale of these and other ancient construction projects. Are we left to believe that ancient engineers decided one day to begin building pyramids, observatories, reservoirs, and apartment houses without a careful, well-calculated, detailed design. In the Louvre in Paris, we find a headless statue of the Chaldean engineer Gouda. On his lap, he holds a stone tablet and pen. One can think of this as the equivalent of our modern-day iPad or Surface Pro. On Gouda's stone tablet is a sketch of a fortress and thus the name of this sculpture, the architect with a plan. If Gouda in 4000 BC was creating sketches of fortresses, then I am certain that other designers, engineers, and architects throughout early civilization have pre-planned and laid out the drawings for their pyramids, observatories, reservoirs, and apartment houses. During the early years of the 12th century, the Gothic period, engineers were busy creating some of the great cathedrals with their elegant flying buttresses and arched ceilings. Finding original drawings and sketches of these magnificent structures is difficult, if not impossible. Here is a drawing done by Jean-Baptiste Antonio Lesus, the restorational architect, architect of the Notre Dame Cathedral some 500 years after its completion. This drawing by Lesus shows tension bars and cables or chains that were added to stabilize the outer walls of the cathedral. The frequency 
of engineering drawings and sketches increased in the 14th and 15th century when Leonardo da Vinci, Albrecht Dewar, and other great mathematicians and engineers, Renaissance men began to refine and teach engineering graphics. The Renaissance period brought us orthographic projections along with a number of pictorial drawing styles. It was not until the early 19th century that William Farish introduced the world to the technique and processes of creating isometric drawings. This image is from the first page of his treatise on isometrical perspective published in 1820. Mechanical drafting machines were introduced shortly after World War II. These drafting machines greatly improved the quality and speed of the engineer and draftsman. In 1963, Ivan Sutherland defended his thesis entitled Sketchpad, and the world of computer-aided design and computer graphics was born. If interested, you should view the two links to the YouTube videos that show Sutherland's initial efforts in the development of modern computer graphics. Many others like Pat Hanratty, Charles Lang, and Ian Braid and others have all played vital roles in bringing about modern engineering graphics. Initial CAD systems were two-dimensional and focused on the automation and creation of 2D drawings. However, in the mid-70s, a number of commercial CAD vendors began delivering 3D surface modeling systems that could project 2D orthographic views onto electronic drawing sheets where the draftsman would take over and finish the drawings. By the late 1980s, CAD vendors were pushing solid modeling, and shortly thereafter, they were promoting parametric or reusable solid models. Building parametric models means you need only build one pedal, crank, and sprocket. By changing the dimensions or parameters of each model, allows these models to fit any size of bike for the smallest child to the largest adult. Starting in 2000, engineering graphics and solids-based parametric modeling began taking a back seat to a focus on product lifecycle management or the managing of engineering data, graphics, and artifacts from their conception through their retirement from service. Today, however, the focus is returning to an emphasis on engineering graphics and how to synchronously collaborate with a team of engineers that are either local or remotely distributed. For the past seven years, I have led a team of researchers in the creation of multi-user, multidisciplinary plugins to commercial CAD packages. These plugins allow teams of engineers to work simultaneously and synchronously in a cloud based session to model complex parts and assemblies in a fraction of the time it would historically have taken a single engineer to do the work. This is an image of six designers working with the lead engineer to simultaneously create all of the internal structure of an unmanned air vehicle. Here is a finished view of the structure they built that took one sixth the elapsed time it would have taken one engineer to produce the same structure. This technology leads to superior designs with fewer errors and escapes or engineering turnbacks. The engineering graphics and modeling world 
has a very rich history, as well as a very bright future with new and better techniques emerging almost daily. Your textbook will most likely have a chapter covering the topics of this lecture. I encourage you to learn this history and watch for future developments in the, in the area of engineering graphics.